Utility tokens in gaming projects are typically minted all the way to Timbuktu and then back again at a rate faster than Roadrunner on steroids. Hey Wizardians, Ryan here about to give you another little crypto education bomb. So if you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and we'll keep you all up to date in the crypto sphere. For those of you that have been around the play to earn space for a while now, the dual token economy is something that's been dominant through the space, especially with projects that actually work on a scholarship model. The most well-known games would be Axie, Pegaxi, and even Krabada with a few more projects already in the works set to launch pretty soon. By this point, you might be wondering what exactly is a dual token model or a two token model? Basically, it's exactly as the name suggests. This is where a project has two different tokens. First of all, it has a main governance token, and then it has a secondary utility token. The governance token has a limited supply, it has a hard cap, whereas the utility token is actually unlimited. For example, let's take another look at Axie. It has AXS right here as the main governance token, again, with a limited supply. And then we have SLP being the utility token, which comes in an unlimited supply. Now, dual token economies typically will use a scholarship model. This is where you have both managers and scholars. Managers typically want to breed as many assets as they can, so that way they can make as many teams as they can, with as many scholars as possible playing these assets to rake in as much of the utility token as possible. Makes sense? In essence, more managers with more teams, with more scholars playing as many assets to bring in as much utility tokens as possible. So with Axie, the ability to earn SLP was the only reason game is even played. Scholars were able to earn while Axie was still in its beginning hype phase when it was going through the roof. And this is all because the large number of managers coming into the game needed SLP. This is all because the amount of managers coming into the game needing to breed SLP severely outweighed the amount of scholars looking to sell, causing the price of the token to rise to the moon as they say. Now that we understand what a dual token economy is, let's dive into some of the problems that one might actually face. The biggest problem a two token economy model faces is the same issue that a country goes through with inflation when it mass produces and mass prints its money. Now, don't worry America, I'm not gonna be naming any names so you can rest safely. Utility tokens in gaming projects are typically minted all the way to Timbuktu and then back again at a rate faster than Roadrunner on steroids. The mince to burn ratio actually dictates how many utility tokens are actually in cycle. Now, the more utility tokens there are, the less value they have. It's a simple matter of supply and demand. Even with strong burning mechanisms, a dual token economy still faces the same issues because the scholars and the gamers have to cash in eventually. And the easiest way to do this is to just sell the tokens on the exchange, make the money and run. Because there is compound hyperinflation in utility tokens, these projects require new money coming in in order to support the current player base's exit liquidity. When new money stops coming in, the token then starts to have less value and less appeal to scholars and gamers who are farming the token in great values. Without new money coming in, you can see all these projects go through the same downward trajectory with the price of their utility token. Unfortunately, it does have an effect on their assets and eventually their governance token starts to slip as well. Let's take a quick look at this analysis, courtesy of Shield Bill. So this is the mint burn ratio uh, for SLP. So when we're talking about uh, how the assets just uh, make more and then just have that compounding effect. So when you breed more, all they're doing is just making a new asset which then produces more of the same utility token, in this case SLP. You can see it goes from, you know, when we were very small, you know, 18 million all the way up and we start getting to, you know, in the 200 millions, even, you know, it, it even touches a billion there for a little bit. And this continued and it just kept producing more and more SLP and you can see all of this between the two uh, is what's in circulation uh, and at some point when the price of the token collapsed and it was no longer profitable to breed now everyone's just cashing out all of the SLP 
and you can see that in the chart here uh, where it's just a complete uh, you know just bearish bearish trend uh, just forever going down until it's at a point where it's uh, the actual data itself costs more uh, than what a uh, scholar can earn and that's what we're seeing happening at the moment in viz uh, all these tokens have dropped you know 99 point something percent uh, from their peak we traded at 41 cents down to just under a half a cent here so we're seeing about 98 percent drop for viz from its all-time high uh, sorry from slp and viz around about the same it's about 99 percent and treasure under the sea very similar looking chart so this is the main problem with this two token model is that what people earn is this utility token and over time this utility token can only ever go down because more and more of it just keeps getting minted the amount that's getting minted compounds on itself because all the assets that are produced from whatever is burned just produce more of the uh of the utility token itself. So the question remains, can you fix the problems with a two token model? If the mint to burn ratio goes unchecked for a while, you end up with hyperinflation thanks to mass token minting. When this happens, a project cannot rein in hyperinflation unless they orchestrate a mass buyback of the token or completely wipe the economy and start again with an entirely new token. By this point, the only hope is to find the infinity stones Give old mate Thanos a ring and hope that he can solve the problem. So what are the benefits of Wazadia's token model? First of all, Wazadia uses a single token model, so there's no risk of mass printing or hyperinflation. With a set number of tokens set aside for play to earn, Wazadia does not rely on new players joining the ecosystem to be able to sustain the token health. Although we do love new players and we encourage everyone to have a try. After all, we are a community focused project, we love to see new players enter our space and we love to be able to encourage returning players to develop their characters, get their passive income NFTs and we love to be able to build our Wizardia world. To really understand how the Wizardia token economy works, here's a little snippet from one of our colleagues, Shill Bill, giving a fuller explanation. So this is the Wizardia uh, arena economy uh, and this is what I really like about the project. Uh, is that the token is uh, somewhat nearly deflationary uh, here uh, if you've ever used uh, an online poker room uh, this is a very similar model to what they do with sit and go tournaments uh, with a lot less rake uh, than poker stars does so when you enter an arena uh, let's say it costs ten dollars uh, for your entry and you're going to battle against somebody else um, 70 cents from that is going to come out of yours uh, and it's going to get split up like this. 25% of that, $7, so $1.75, uh, is going to be uh, put back into the arena. And I'm guessing that one's going to be for uh, overlays and uh, extra money added into uh, big tournaments and things like that, which is awesome. Uh, that gets people really wanting to play in those big, uh, big prize pool tournaments. 50% uh, go to the Arena Genesis NFT holders, and this is probably the bit I like the most. If you told me that I could have a small stake in all of the uh, sit and go tournaments uh, and the rake from that from PokerStars um, back in 2003, I would 100% be in. Um, if anyone was around for that uh, and the boom and how much money that actually made, um, it's it's a great deal and that's why i really like this uh, with the genesis nft holders you're essentially um, taking a part of the rake uh, from everyone playing so the more people that jump in and play if this game really takes off and you start getting you know, a couple of hundred thousand daily active users blows up on twitch or something like that people are wagering all the time uh, you're consistently getting that uh, passive income stream back um, from all of those uh, tournaments and uh, and arena matches and 25% goes back to Wizardia team, which is good. And the reason why this is good is that no, not many other companies or, or games um, actually take money for themselves and for their staff uh, and for running costs in the game token itself, um, which essentially makes Wizardia care about the token price. Uh, you see a lot of these other projects just not caring about the token price. They're like, yeah, whatever, we make our money from the marketplace. Um, and that's normally in ETH or USDT, uh, as you've seen in uh, Axie Infinity. And it just goes through just a volume of sales in the marketplace. Uh, here, it's, it's coming directly the same way that Genesis NFT holders are. I'm sure they're going to probably do the marketplace as well. 
but I really like the fact that they're backing themselves and backing the token uh, in that's how they're going to uh, take some money. So my final thoughts, if Web3 is going to have us all joining together and joining hands in some kind of metaverse, then the way that Web3 games economy works needs to change away from the two token economy model to have any sort of longevity. I think the best way that Web3 can be fully integrated into crypto is via asset ownership. Players being rewarded with valuable in-game NFTs that have been built through hours of gameplay and investment. Players can then sell their NFTs on marketplaces instead of grinding away for hours and hours and hours just for a token that's gonna lose value over time because of the system that's designed to fail. So if you're ready to jump on board with a single token GameFi model, head over to wizardia.io. Our tournament's are live and we're excited to see you there. Well, there you have it, Wizardians. If you've learned something today and you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and we'll keep you up to date with everything happening in the crypto sphere. Witness Wizardia slowly emerge from the fog. Uncover its magic in the fights for survival. Choose your wizards wisely. Gain power and get ready before the big game. Join the Magic Adventures with Zardia Tournaments, the alpha version of the game.